Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. We've got another gun gripe episode for you. Alright, buckle in, we got a few things to go over regarding Virginia. This is another update. Guys, this is a very delicate situation and there's going to be some updates coming in. I hope you can understand we're not trying to blow up your inbox. We're not trying to make a big deal about too, too much. Well, we are trying to make a big deal about it because we want to get people involved. But uh, I hope you understand that we care deeply about this issue and there are a lot of fights going on at many state levels, guys. They're still fighting over that really nasty bill in Washington. What was it, 1639? 1639. Yeah. Back so they're still, uh, you know, collecting signatures to hopefully, you know, repeal that particular bill in Washington. So in Washington State, there's stuff going on. There's another assault weapons ban that was submitted in North Carolina. Uh, we have our own uh, SB 281, which is an assault weapons ban that was introduced here in Georgia. And then we're dealing with the stuff in Virginia. So uh, there's things going on and it's happening very quickly and there's a lot of grassroots stuff happening that we really need to be make sure that we're you know beating the drum hard and getting people involved uh, I believe New Jersey recently came out in support of 2A sanctuary counties in the state <laughs> of New Jersey so there's many things happening all around the country and it's creating a wildfire of 2A support uh, and in some cases obviously some people that don't support 2A that are trying to submit these bills but overwhelmingly we're seeing a very big amount of support from lots of folks regarding 2A. So we want this video to mainly be about Virginia. Okay, a couple of things are going on that y'all need to know. And I made myself a little cheat sheet because there's some <laughs> stuff, I mean, it's so much to remember. <laughs> we okay. need a cheat sheet. I had to have a cheat sheet. <clears throat> uh, so Chad, HB67, let's all discuss right. that real quickly here. So with all the, with all the, you know, talk going on with sanctuary counties and stuff, uh, in Virginia, if you guys haven't been following what's been going on, multiple counties in Virginia have been declaring themselves san Second Amendment sanctuary counties, okay, where none of the local law enforcement or the officials are going to enforce gun laws, unconstitutional gun laws that come down from the state level, okay? And at the point of this video, there's like 80, and there's 95 counties in Virginia. There's 80 that are sanctuary counties now, from what I understand. And I believe there's only <clears throat> maybe like eight counties that, that just it. haven't, no, that haven't even oh. passed re resolutions yet at all. Oh, so there were a few I think that... there's like eight or nine counties that are still actually on the table okay. potentially. So it could end up being How? nearly 90 counties. And there's only like maybe four counties that have downright said, no, we are not okay. a 2 a sanctuary. So pretty much the big municipalities have said like, no, they've denied Right, but okay. what's funny and that we're seeing is when you compare the state map, uh, you would compare the election map to the 2A Sanctuary Counties uh, map, <clears throat> you see that most of the counties that <laughs> voted completely blue are not 2A sanctuaries. Yeah. However, <clears throat> however, one interesting thing is there are a few counties that voted blue, okay, but are still 2A Sanctuary Counties, oddly enough. That's really strange that you see that kind of paradigm shift. I mean, yeah. like here in Georgia where we live, I'm in District 3, and recently, Henry County went blue, the county he lives in, but they, they still have very, very, I guess, conservative right of the road mm. values in terms of how they're coming up with policy. So it's, it's strange. Like, so you end up having Democrats that live in an area that is, is really more red in terms of the way they look at things, well, their, their po actual policies. In my, county, the, in my county, it depends on what city you're in. Right, but but the but just because a place votes blue doesn't necessarily mean that their actual policies are in fact blue. Now it all, it usually does, but there are a few counties that voted blue that are two A sanctuary counties. Oddly enough, I think it's only like one or two, but yeah. they are on there. All right, so with with this influx of all these counties saying that they're not going to support unconstitutional laws that come down from the state level, uh, a bill was put out, okay, this is uh, SB, or no, this is House Bill, this is HB 67, mm -hmm. all right, now, <clears throat> this is regarding public safety employee striking, terminates, and becomes temporarily ineligible for public employment, all right, so it says, any public safety employee who, in concert with two or more such employees, for the purpose of obstructing, impeding, or suspending any activity or operation of his employing agency or any other governmental agency strikes or willingly or will, willfully refuses to perform the duties of his employment shall by such action be deemed to have terminated his employment and be ineligible for employment in any position or capacity during the next 12 months by the Commonwealth, any county, city, town, or other political subdivision of the Commonwealth. Okay, so basically 
if you are a law enforcement official in a sanctuary county, in a 2A sanctuary county, and you decide that you are not going to enforce the unconstitutional laws that came down from the state, you will be fired. So if they fire everybody, who's going to enforce all the unconstitutional gun laws in the first place? All right. So so what 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 I'd like to sort of add to this, and this is just this my is perspective, insane. okay? Um, let, let's think about this in terms of what they want to happen versus the reality. <laughs> okay. I think that's just saber rattling. All right. I'm not saying it won't pass. Well, but of course it is. It, it's a bit of saber rattling. <clears throat> and, and what happens is when you get all of these politics and the bureaucracies involved, and when multiple bureaucracies within a certain state, in this case a state, when they start clashing, it starts to become a political battle of who can sort of departmentalize against each other, right? You know, oh, well, I'll use these people. I'll use that people. Oh, well, you're not supporting me? Then we'll drop your funding. So see, it becomes this issue of, oh, well, you won't support what I'm going to do. Well, we just won't fund you. We'll cut your funding. We'll cut your, your benefits or whatever. Or mm -hmm. we'll fire, in this case, we'll fire you. Okay, yeah. so um, a sheriff is an elected position. Okay, so that is a slippery slope there. You know, you can't take an elected official and say, oh, well, you know what, screw you and, and get you right out of here. Now, mm -hmm. there, there's also some other very scary implications. Like we mentioned in the previous video, Governor Northam has mentioned that he will, you know, attempt to call in the National <clears throat> Guard to uh, enforce gun control. So let's, let's just say in their magic fantasy land that HB 67 goes through, and let's just say by proxy, 99.9% .9 of all police, sheriff, all government employees that are saying, screw this, get fired. Okay. Well, you're definitely not going to get anything enforced then, okay, because mm -hmm. you done fired all your law enforcement. So who are you going to bring in? No one's going to want that job, right? When you say, hey, by the way, I got a job for you, but it involves uh, <laughs> some pretty dangerous things that are not good for your health. People aren't going to take that, right? So, all right, the National Guard is com comprised of citizens. From yep. I, don't, I don't know how you guys uh, understand what a Guard unit uh, consists of, but usually Guard units are drawn up, obviously, of people that live in a given state, right? So if you're uh, in the Virginia National Guard, well, then you are a Virginian citizen, okay? You are, you, you know, so, all right, you're a Virginia National Guard soldier. You get drawn up on orders, and you're supposed to show up and collect guns or enforce gun control against your neighbors and your people you go to church with, people you work for. Remember, the people that are in the Guard, they have jobs, right? They have regular lives, right? They go to church. They have jobs. They have friends, family, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, all these people that live within the communities. What do you think that they're going to say and or do against these people that actually mm -hmm. show up? Now, I imagine... It's probably going to be at least 60 to between 60 and 80 percent of them are going to be AWOL. Yep. So you have maybe a hardcore 20 percent that, that are status that are going to support what Gov Governor Northam wants. All right. You've let go all your law enforcement, all your sheriffs, and you actually think that it's going to go over well. I just don't think they're thinking about not only the moral and principle. Uh, facts that are going on here, but the fiscal irresponsibility, they're not considering, uh, you know, the logistical irresponsibility of what they're proposing. They just don't have the manpower. And then three, the will of the people is the will of the people, right? And, and, and if you're trying to do something constitutionally invalid, like, like gun control or supporting gun control, you have to be prepared that, yeah, the mob's going to break out the pitchforks and it might not end well, you know, for that situation. So, I just don't see it playing out like they think. I, I think that Northrum and all of his puppets think that um, people are just going to go, oh, we don't want no trouble. You're talking Virginia. It's just not going to happen like they think it is. Like they're living in a fantasy world that's completely separate from reality. And they're that's HB 67 <laughs> literally is, is, is fantasy. Last time I checked, there were a lot of hills in Virginia. Oh, oh boy. Okay, so now this is a relatively unsubstantiated rumor, and I hope that you guys can help me here. I'm relying on you guys. Now, I read this. I don't know if it's true, and I'm not trying to spread the rumor mill. Don't think that. That's not what this is about. We haven't been able to verify. We don't know if it's fake news or not, but right. everything we've seen so far, we wouldn't put it past Northam to say something like right. this. Right, and, and, and we, don't, we don't want this to be gospel, <clears throat> but this is just something I read, and hopefully you guys can either confirm or deny this for me, and your fellow viewers, please do. Um, but I read that Northam has threatened to cut power and services to counties that will not enforce 
uh, the gun laws. Right. Okay, so, so what what I did cell read, phones, internet, power, yeah. like that's bad. What I did read was he was threatening threatening to cut funding for county agencies. Okay, like law enforcement agencies. Okay, right. state funding to get new gear, cars, whatever, amenities, things yeah. like that that they need to do their job. And then it's possible that yeah. maybe that got turned into power and, and goods when maybe Possibly. it wasn't intended that you know way. How, you know how telephone works, okay? Uh, yeah, so just <clears throat> take that with a grain of salt, guys. I just want to report that because that's what we saw. And, and please, take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Verify it. I, I can't verify that one. Okay. All right, now this is another one that's important. All right. uh, the Attorney General sent out a letter. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, he's obviously the chief law enforcement officer. Not only did the attorney general release a letter mm -hmm. uh, regarding this. Oh, I'm sorry. Not the attorney general. Um, one of the National Guard generals is yeah, who I'm thinking of. Was, would that be the attorney general? Uh, no. Okay. No. That was... Um, I, I submitted... All right. So, look. On, on Instagram yeah. the other day, I put this letter up. I'm sorry. Guys, there's so much going on. <laughs> it's it's hard to separate it all. So, I hope you so, understand we're, we're, we're trying to get this all right. out. The, the, there, was a one, there was one letter that was from a state representative who was um, looking to seek clarification from the attorney general on whether or not, if they passed a law, okay, if they passed these draconian gun bills, could these sanctuary counties technically not enforce them. Right. He there, wanted, were, there were two letters. The yeah, ones he, he sent... That, that, he was wanting clarification on that. We'll put links to all this in the description box below, right. but that rep was wanting clarification and guidance from the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. You know, So they want the Attorney General of the state to make a, make a statement on this situation. And then this other deal was from Major General Timothy P. Williams, the adjunct or the adjuncted general of Virginia. Right. So he's the head of the National Guard. Yeah, like of the head honcho, the guard guy. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, <clears throat> basically, and, and I'm going to essentially paraphrase this letter very, very, very <laughs> loosely, right? Yeah. It's essentially, he's like, hey, we don't have all the facts. All right. We're not going to tell people what to think when they're out of uniform. When you're in uniform, obviously, he wants people to mm -hmm. be respectful and, and professional and to, you know what I mean, be professional, right? Mm. Basically, he's like, look, we don't know what the governor is going to do, what he may or may not do. Well, none of this stuff's law yet. Right, nothing's so. law yet. And basically what he's saying is he doesn't want to speculate uh, about what could or couldn't happen or what role the guard may actually have in the enforcement of these laws, if any, if the laws even come to effect at all. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we feel strongly that they will be voted in. Um, but I, I can understand the general wanting to keep a cool head and try to look at the perspective. Now, on Instagram... I kind of lashed out in, in my typical way a little bit, but after I've had a couple of days to think about it, it does sort of make you think like, well, maybe he's just playing the card of not choosing a side so that when he does know what which side is, is the truly worst side, which of course we know will be the side that is trying to enforce unconstitutional gun control, mm -hmm. then maybe he can make a power play at that point and release a statement to his soldiers saying, look, no one's asking you to carry out unlawful orders, okay? You are not, as a soldier, required to carry out unlawful orders, okay? But, you know, look, though, to play devil's advocate like you always do, to carry out unlawful orders is one thing, but if the order is the law of the land, you know, that's what that's what the argument is on the anti-gunner side. But you swear an oath you know? to defend the Constitution. It is. A, it, so if a do. law supersedes or overrides the Constitution, yep. then by factor, it's not a law. But this is where they're basing their argument from. It's like, well, well, we're here in the Congress and we're making this law. And you're going to have to go by it. Well, they always say, well, everybody always claims to be a law-abiding citizen. All right, well, then obey the law. It's not quite that simple, right? I mean, so Rosa Parks, all right, she sat on uh, on the bus and got in trouble. Oh, well, you're supposed to sit at the back of the bus. And it started yeah. this entire civil <laughs> rights movement over Rosa Parks and refusing to sit in the back of the bus. Well, yeah. at the time, that was the law in Alabama, yeah. right? If you were a minority, you're supposed to sit at the back of the bus. And what did she do? She said, I'm not going to sit at the back of the bus. <clears throat> it's crazy. Why? <laughs> and then she got arrested. It caused this big stink. But yeah. it got people's attention, right? She was a <laughs> martyr to that cause. And people tend to forget that just because it's something is a law doesn't mean it is morally sound. You know, yeah, at, at one time, there was all these horrible segregation laws. And when we live in this modern society, mm -hmm. we think, you know, how in the world would that ever fly, right? I mean, separate bathrooms, segregation, right? Separate schools, that is the craziest thing ever. I mean, I grew up uh, in an urban 
area, urban town. And I grew up around a wide variety of different people from all walks of life. And for me, it's just it was just a normal thing. It mm -hmm. wasn't it wasn't like, you know, children aren't brought up to think, oh, that person, that person, right? I don't want to turn this into that talk, but it's important mm -hmm. that people understand that the fight in Virginia to oppose these unconstitutional laws is just as important and just as valid as Rosa Parks and the fight for civil rights. Mm -hmm. It's just as important and just as valid as the people who fought against prohibition. And these gun laws are the prohibition and civil rights movement of our time, mm -hmm. right? It's what we, 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 the people, in years to come, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, they're going to look back on us and they're going to go, you know what, they stood up for what they believed in mm. because it was the moral pulse of the people and they stood up against tyrants and they stood mm. up against unconstitutional laws. And then whatever system that they live in at that time, they're going to be able to point back and go, you know what, those people were the martyrs that we needed. And unfortunately, that's what we're looking at. Okay, mm -hmm. now I'm going to move on here. I'm <laughs> sorry. Ahead. Okay, so <laughs> Taswell County has formed a formal militia. Okay, so I want to expand on this just a little bit. So there's a lot of 2A sanctuary counties that have been uh, stood up and they're saying, hey, you know, we support mm -hmm. the Second Amendment. We're not going to infringe on our citizens' rights. We're not going to enforce state-level gun laws. We're not going to commit county, city, and municipal resources to enforce these laws. That doesn't mean that someone from the state can't come down and enforce gun control, right? Mm -hmm. So if they had, I don't know, a special group of state patrol officers or someone that has statewide jurisdiction, some form of uh, state law enforcement, doesn't mean that they couldn't pull someone over and do a spot check, and then if you had the item in question, now you're in trouble mm -hmm. and everything like that. Doesn't mean that. But what Taswell County has done is gone, gone one step further, and they formed, uh, from what I understand, a formal militia. Now, what this means is that they're going to provide... And, and this is my understanding of it, folks. Um, please understand, like, read up on this. Uh, there's some great information mm -hmm. over on the Virginia Civil Defense League's website. We'll mm -hmm. link it below. Go check it out. Um, it is important. But this militia, basically what they're saying is they're going to provide county resources to ensure that folks are trained, uh, concealed carry, gun safety. Mm -hmm. So if there's any citizens that want to take, mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming, like, a, you know, a safety course or a concealed carry course that... They are looking to provide that. Uh, from yeah. my understanding, they are looking to actually provide training to citizens that wish to receive it. And I think that is a strong message that makes a lot of sense, right? Because everyone should get a little training if they want it, right? And if you're actually going to provide county resources to help, you know, you know, take care of that, right? I think that's overall a little bit better for the safety and security of everyone in the county, right? Because, you know, yeah, maybe a guy's been carrying a gun on his hip for all this time, but now maybe with a little bit of extra training, give you a little bit better level of safety and confidence. And let's face it, not everybody's a dyed-in-the-wool, lifelong gun person. Some people recently have just gotten into guns in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Sure, if those folks want a little training, by all means, you know, I don't think that could hurt anything for the society to be a little safer by helping up people out with safety. Now, we don't know how far down the rabbit hole the whole militia idea is going to go. We don't know if they're going to, you know, sign up volunteers and it's going to be like where they're forming platoons and, and conducting like actual training. We don't know, okay? But Taswell County is an important situation to look at, and you guys need to monitor that situation closely. Mm -hmm. Taswell County very well could be the boiling point of this entire situation, so people need to pay attention to it. Yeah. So, bottom line is if Northam, if, okay, if, if the Congress in Virginia passes these gun control bills, they pass SB 16 and the other, and then our HB 67 here, and they make it a, a crime for <laughs> they make it a crime for a law enforcement official or some sort of county employee to protest what's going on in these unconstitutional laws and then fire them and then bring in the National Guard to help like mop up the situation. And then assume that they're actually even gonna show up. I mean that they're not gonna be AWOL. They're dude, like Eric said, they're living in fantasy land. Because right now what's being done is Governor Northam and the anti-gunners in Virginia are poking the bear. You know, they really are. They're just keep poking away and like, all right, well, you're going to erode our rights away to the certain point where there's going to be a tipping over point. And I don't know what's going to happen after that. I know. And, and, and look, I'll just offer this bit of uh, closure, hopefully, that 
Let's hope that, that cooler heads prevail. It's very important that we, we react to what happens, not what we think will happen. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we look at a situation with extreme logic, fierce logic, mm -hmm. because we have to be responsible for our actions at every turn, right? You know, we don't want someone doing something stupid and it wind up being a, a very bad situation. So we hope that the heads involved in this will remain cool and understand that the will of the people ultimately determines what a law is. You can pass a law, but the people define mm -hmm. that law, right? If, okay, we have this huge war on drugs, the drug war that we've yeah. talked about. Look at all these states that at a state level have said, you know, uh, yes, these drugs are illegal at a federal level, but we are not going to uh, we're not going to put our hands in this. We think that our citizens should be able to use marijuana or whatever type of drug. And all of a sudden, now you see uh, different states all over our country that you know marijuana is a completely normal thing, like it's a medicinal uh, thing with all these different uh, pot farms or what do you call them uh, dispensaries mm -hmm. opening up. Now, uh, without getting on the the vein or argument of the legality of whether or not drugs should be legal. It does set forth a very important precedence, though, because it shows that the will of the people will always trump what the law physically is. Like, there, there's, there's law, and there's law that is written and enforced under the color of law, mm -hmm. and then there is law that is there and written and not enforced, and then just simply becomes an unenforced law that people just simply choose to ignore, right? Georgia has an old anti-poaching law on the books, mm -hmm. okay? It's from like the 60s or something. It's from forever ago. And it says that you can't have a loaded long gun in your car because they're worried about poachers. And that was a whole vein of why the bill was written. And it's one of those bills, that, uh, those, those laws, it's on the books in Georgia, but no one enforces it. Yep. It just doesn't matter, right? No one cares. But that's why you can't travel with a rifle, a loaded rifle or a loaded shotgun in your vehicle, but you can travel with a loaded pistol. Right. You're not supposed to. But it's one of those things that, I mean, I've lived in Georgia my whole life, and I've never had a single law enforcement officer give two craps about whether or not my long gun is loaded or not, or whether my shotgun is loaded or not, right? So it becomes one of those moot mm -hmm. points that once law enforcement doesn't care about it anymore, once the civilians don't care about it anymore, why does it matter, right? Yeah. So laws should be implemented and maintained and enforced mm -hmm. based on the people's will, mm -hmm not on the fact that you got a bunch of angry people together to pass some stupid law that only benefits them as a very inclusive group of people that think that only that they should get to determine how everybody else lives. Well, no, it should be in it. Well, it shouldn't be a law to begin with, but that law should be enforced or not enforced based on the will of the people, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're in a place where enforcing that law is extremely unpopular, not to mention possibly even dangerous to your health, well, then why enforce it? Why drive a wedge between people? And that is what is so scary about the political stratum in this country is that it's based on division. It's the blue side, the red side. It's like sports teams at this point where you have all these people that, well, I'm a red. Well, I'm a blue. Well, the blues control this place. You have to play by our rules. It's not quite that simple, right? The two-party system, our founding fathers were... were we're viciously against a two-party system, right? You should vote for a candidate based on their, their, their qualifications and their attributes as a person and their politics and their policies as a person and not what, what you know, team they play on, right? So this two-team situation has driven people into their, into their pins. And now there's this huge middle ground in the middle where it's just a no-man's land. And that is very scary that American politics has taken this type of direction. It is. It's unfortunate that, you know, the major municipalities are pretty much like democratic cesspools, if you will, of policy. I mean, it's just mob rule there. You know, if you if you live in a big city like that and you're a freedom loving, liberty loving person that loves the Second Amendment, and loves guns, I mean you're living under draconian laws already. You know, especially if you're in a place like New York. You've got that tiny little island, okay, that pretty much controls the politics of the entire state. Yeah. I highly doubt that people upstate in New York are worried about the politics of New York City. This, this country you know? really does need electoral college type system set up for state elections because the problem becomes, you know, all of these sanctuary cities are letting in all these illegals, right? And the issue becomes is you dilute your society with uh, not only illegals, but, and, and look, 
legal immigrants, that's all good and fine. You come here legally, I'm not saying that people shouldn't be allowed to come here if they come here in the proper way. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, yeah, they come from all these different parts of the world and they come here, sure, some of them legally, but then they vote blue because they come from a socialist country or they come from a place that was communist or they come from some country where the rules and laws sucked, right? That's why they want to come here because of our freedoms. Mm -hmm. But then they vote for the party that wants to take away freedoms. So it's the issue is they bring their policies along with them. And that's the huge boiling point that's happening is all of these uh, illegals and immigrants, all right, they all settle into these big population centers because that's where the work is. So you get a lot of people in one place and they all have a very similar belief system. And then it just turns blue, right? Well, the issue also becomes is that what do the Democrats always push for in these blue areas? Oh, we want more lax voter ID laws. Oh, we don't want voter ID laws, right? Yeah, of course they don't want voter ID laws because they want someone to be able to go vote blue that ain't got the proper identification or they're letting people vote twice. It wouldn't surprise me if, if some people weren't even voting twice. Mm -hmm. And there's been situations where because of improper voter ID laws, you know, they end up having dead people voting, right? Uh, how is a World War II veteran that's been dead 20 years, how'd he vote? Yep. And there's all that kind of trickery going on. Because state-level elections are a popularity contest and not set up in an electoral college, you have a disproportionate balance of power, and it causes, uh, you know, just because a, a small geographical uh, unit of people believe one thing, that's great. Let those policies be your problem in your area where you voted for it. <laughs> don't, don't make everybody else have to suffer just because you want some draconian crap. Yep. That is a very unpopular opinion amongst many people. So, Well, it's mob rule at its finest, but um, right. just real quick, one thing, one thing to consider, you know, especially in this era of media bias, okay, is you have, you have a Democratic governor of Virginia calling for the possibility of using the National Guard to go and enforce unconstitutional gun laws, all right, in these 2A sanctuary counties. All right, well, what about all these sanctuary cities that are harboring illegal immigrants? And they're basically saying, oh, well, if you stay here, you're safe. We're not going to have any local people in force. So federal, federal agencies have to come in and, and try to find these illegals in the cities and get them out of here because they're not only taking jobs, they're taking taxpayers' hard-earned money, or, well, they're taking taxpayers' money, okay, which shouldn't have to pay taxes in the first place anyways, but that's another gripe for another day. But they're, they're using all these programs that could be used for other legitimate citizens of this country. And they're stealing from us, more or less. Well, there's okay? a far more reaching but, thing, but go but ahead. The, if, if a conservative or a, a red governor of a state said he was going to call on the National Guard to go and purge these sanctuary cities of, immigrant, of immigrants, yeah. it'd be a different story in the media. It'd like, be all over the news. It'd you're be not, plastered everywhere. Yeah, you're not hearing anything about a, a, a Democratic governor calling on the National Guard to possibly go and enforce unconstitutional laws against its own citizens, U.S. citizens, okay? You're not hearing about that in the mainstream media, are you? Yeah. Nope. And, and you're, uh, you're also not seeing all of the numerous pictures of thousands of people showing up to voice their concern at these council meetings and oh, stuff. Oh, gosh. I, 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 there was one Dude. guy on Instagram that sent me multiple photos, and we're talking a thousand people outside of the building. Look, they, So many people, 2,000 plus look. people showing up in every single county. How many counties are sanctuary <laughs> counties now? Almost 90? What, 80, 81? Uh, it was 80, I think, last time I was. 80 but, counties, and you figure two or 3,000 hardcore people. Uh, that so <laughs> there, was a, there was a vote. This, this fellow sent me a, a video of his uh, council meeting where, where they voted on sanctuary status for their own county, and it was in a gymnasium. Okay, and it was overflowing with people. One guy sent me a photo, and there was a line of people going down a staircase, out the out the door, down the sidewalk. They had to have crossing guards with flashlights and vests on to, just to, to control the traffic. And then even though people couldn't be admitted to the meeting, they still stood outside mm -hmm. and showed their support in the cold. All right, so you got all those people showing their support for the for the Second Amendment, okay, without their firearms. So. Well, here's my thing. I mean, that's just something to think about, it, okay? They come there as a show of force, right? To voice their concerns for these unconstitutional laws. But 
if you poke the bear too much, I mean, those people are armed. Yeah, but okay? here's I the mean, scary just, thing about it, too. I mean, just okay. something to think about. Yeah, yeah. Poking the bear, that's dangerous. But my thing is, okay, you look at all these people that are so pro-gun and they love liberty and they love personal responsibility and safety. And they're showing up these these council meetings and they're voicing their support for the Second Amendment, right? Where are all the pic uh, pictures all over the place of the antis, right? So all we see is this side of, man, look at all these people that love freedom. Where are the antis? I mean... That doesn't make sense, right? It it's just seems like there would be, okay, if the will of the people really was to have more gun control, right? Like if that really was mm -hmm. their will, where are those people? Where's the legitimate where, support? Where, where are the legitimate mm -hmm. people showing up and, and, and offering a clear and concise argument as to why these laws need to be the law of the land? There always has to be a counter argument, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen so many videos all right, Tim from Military Arms Channel, uh, Mike, Mr. Guns and Gear, numerous other great channels that are really fighting hard to put this information out there. They've posted videos that people take on their cell phones of like, hey, people offering arguments. Like, you know, this guy spoke at the council meeting and offered arguments as to why uh, this is a horrible thing and that people should not support it. And these are great arguments, right? Like, really passionate and, and, and tugs at your heartstrings and make you really proud to be an American, right? Where are the counter arguments, right? Where are the anti saying, you know, the, how bad we are and, and why all of this, this needs to be the law, right? Where are the, where's the other argument? It just does not there. It doesn't exist. It doesn't reason. exist. You're being lied to. Yep. That's the issue is they try to make it out like, oh, people overwhelmingly support gun control. Well, maybe, maybe certain governments do. But I guarantee you the people don't. And the thing mm -hmm. is, it doesn't become a red or a blue issue, right? Just because someone voted Democrat. Now, I may not agree with somebody voting Democrat, but it doesn't mean that there aren't Democrats that love guns. It doesn't mean there's not Democrats that want to live free just like the rest of us. And that, and that we can see eye to eye in that concept, right? Mm -hmm. Regardless of what you believe, I think most people that are genuine will agree that folks should be able to protect each other and protect themselves and their families and their communities. I don't think anybody would disagree that that's, that's not a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. If someone's trying to hurt your neighbor, you're going to help your neighbor. So at what point do we stop being neighbors, right? What what point do we stop being, you know, relatives and brothers and sisters? And at what point do we stop, you know, getting together and having conversations about our differences why such a disconnect? Mm -hmm. Because they want to create a disconnect that doesn't exist. That disconnect is not really there. Now, I've got friends that are Democrats. I may not agree with all of their ideas, but we're still friends. We still agree that guns are very important to a free society. So what I'm asking is, where is this disconnect? Where is the anti-gun argument other than coming from the government? So when the government is the only anti-gun argument where are you really getting there? You're just giving power away. You're giving away security for perceived safety that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. That's what we're dealing with. All right, one more thing. I'm sorry, guys. Well, sorry. I was just looking up uh, the NRA's like position on sanctuary counties and stuff, and <laughs> can't find much. So they have a very short statement on it, but that's it. Like, I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing that the NRA is doing right now. Well, Eric Pratt and GOA, they have been very active, as well as the folks from uh, you know, FPC, they've yep. been very active. And, of course, the folks from the Virginia Citizen Civil Defense Citizens. League. Yep. Uh, yeah, Civil or Citizens, Citizens Defense, 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 League, Defense yep. League. Make sure you follow all of their efforts and support them when you can. All right, January 20th is Rally uh, Lobby Day. I'm sorry. Uh, if you go over to the... Um, the Virginia Citizens Defense League website. <laughs> they'll they'll have a whole bit of information there about what you can do to Look support on uh, on January twentieth. Okay, there. and the thing is, we're actually going to be at Shot Show. I will not be able to attend, but we've been trying to really um, promote this so that folks get involved and show solidarity. We're going to be at Shot putting together content. You know, we're trying very hard to support this effort in every way we can. But don't think that we don't want to be there. I really, really want to be there. But I have a schedule conflict. Mm -hmm. I've got to go to SHOT. I've already bought my plane ticket before I even knew about this. So I hope you guys understand that I won't be there. But I hope that you can make it and support it. And believe me, I wish I could be there.
but that's why we really want to put this out as much as we can so that people know uh, to go, go over to the website and look up the information. I know there's like a bus schedule and all of these things that can help you get there to support it. So make sure if you can, uh, please. Wait a minute. You go. mean there's buses that are going to be hauling people to a legitimate rally? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's more of a, lo a lobby day. A lobby I day. Think, uh, okay. and, I, and I don't know a lot of details, but I want you to go over there and check it out. Uh, guys, I know this video is kind of long, but we hope you understand mm -hmm. there's a lot of things going on, and this is a fragile situation, and we're trying our best to stay informed and keep you informed. So thank you so much for supporting our channel. Guys, I can't say it enough. Like, we've seen so many people supporting us. Uh, you know, we've seen a surge in man can sales. We've seen more people uh, supporting us on Patreon. We've seen, um, you know, more folks buying man cans, all of those things. Look, all the funds that we earn off of products that you buy go right back into supporting this type of content. It is time consuming to put together, but we really hope that you guys benefit from it. And we really are proud to be able to get the word out and to use our platform in a way that we feel benefits everybody, all the freedom-loving people at large, and our uh, fellow Virginians up there, okay? So uh, thank you so much for supporting our channel. Uh, you know, there are many ways. If you if you love what we do and you wish to support us, all the support is graciously appreciated. So thank you so much. And uh, if I don't have a chance to mention this again, I hope everybody has a great holiday. You know, the holidays are a great chance to get together with friends and family and discuss these kind of things. You know, I, I know some folks don't like to talk about these mm -hmm. things with their families, but... It's important to get the word out to your friends and family and to make sure everybody understands how fragile this situation is and ultimately how fragile our republic is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's very scary that we're living in such a tumultuous time as a country and we, we've never been more divided as a country. And that division yeah. is, is cancerous and it needs to be cut from our society. We, we need to bring people back together together. And we all need to fight for a unified team. And that's what the founding fathers of this country wanted is for us to be united, right? To, for us to all, you know, work towards a common goal, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that we can get back there. We just have to cut the cancer out. And mm -hmm. uh, there, there are certainly some scary things going on. And I hope you guys have a great holiday. Be safe. Travel safely. And uh, we have many more videos coming out uh, the remainder of the year. And thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, more gripes, more five guns, more facts, lots of stuff on the way. Thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. See you guys.